हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आई टी के फंडे वेर वी मेक आई टी इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर एवरी वन आई एम अंशुल एंड इन दिस वीडियो वील टॉक अबाउट ट्वेंटी थ्री फेमस एजोर सर्विसेज इन वन लाइन वील ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दीज सर्विसेज डू एंड दिस वीडियो हैज स्पेसिफिकली कम आफ्टर ऑल ऑफ यू रिक्वेस्टेड टू मेक दिस वीडियो ऑन एजोर आफ्टर आई मेड अ सिमिलर वीडियो ऑन जी सी पी एंड देन आई रिसेंटली मेड एन अदर वीडियो वेर आई टॉक अबाउट ट्वेंटी फोर सच famous products on aws so here we are we'll talk about these 23 services but the good thing is we will also understand which particular product or service from google and uh, aws are the counterparts or the competitors of these particular services so you can draw parallels if you are working on google and aws so without further ado let's understand very quickly what these particular services do let's get started so friends let's start with compute under compute as we all know azure vms anything start with this particular service across cloud so in aws we have ec2 and for, and in google we have google compute engine similarly we have azure vms where we can spin up virtual machines using different operating systems and it is one of the most uh, basic services which any cloud provider provides the second under compute is aks which, which is azure kubernetes engine or sorry cuz uh, azure kubernetes services the counterpart is uh, elastic kubernetes services eks in uh, in aws and gke google kubernetes engine uh, in google cloud again a managed kubernetes service to maintain your container to manage your container workloads the third is azure function it is similar to aws lambda and cloud functions in google event driven functions completely managed by the cloud uh, no infrastructure needed okay so this is basically functions as a service so it is very event driven in nature if you want to do some uh, scheduled task or some event driven task you can use azure function so for example you want to upload an image into your uh, storage uh, we'll talk about storage in a bit and you want this particular image to be automatically converted into a different format then uh, for example you are uploading uh, png uh, format and you want it to be converted into jpeg uh, azure functions can be used in those kind of uh, scenarios event based scenarios azure app service is purely platform as a service uh, of sort but i have kept it under compute so if you have your code your application you can uh, directly deploy it on azure app service if you talk about google uh, you have google app engine and similarly for aws we have elastic beanstalk so this is azure app service so coming to the fifth service under compute it is azure batch which is equivalent to as uh, in aws we have a aws batch and in google we have google data flow and it is basically to run uh, parallel batch execution jobs for processing uh, data and that's what is the main purpose of azure batch if you have uh, to process a large amount of data in batches then you can use azure batch so if you want to render images if you want to do heavy processing of data in parallel then azure batch is the service to go for so coming to storage guys the number one is azure blob storage and this is equivalent to cloud storage on google or the famous service in aws which is s3 buckets simple storage service so basically you can store your media files your images your audios your videos whatever kind of unstructured uh, data you have or semi structured data you have you can just upload that on your blob storage okay and uh, you could upload your excel your pdfs whatever whatever you want Uh, blob storage is uh, the place to do it now they also have uh, so what's the comparison i have told you but they also have azure data lake storage which is slightly specific in here you will store data for your data analytics need and you would use this maybe as your staging area where you could stage you could load all your raw data for your data lakes for your data warehouses for your data analytics massive structured data you could upload here now in google you will again use cloud storage and for aws also you have aws uh, s3 bucket but this is very specifically provided by azure for your data lake kind of needs okay any kind of raw data you want to load you will load it into azure data lake storage i think they have now got generation 2 of this particular service 
The eighth service is Azure Files. This is your file share service, which you can use across uh, different VMs. Suppose if you have a file share on your Windows uh, server, you could replicate it uh, using Azure Files. So comparing it to Google, you have Cloud File Store and Amazon EFS, Elastic File Store, I guess. So uh, this is Azure Files. So guys, coming to the databases, the ninth service under database is Azure Cosmos DB, which is basically a globally distributed um, NoSQL database. Now, if you compare it to Google, you have, I think, Google Data Store uh, as a, you know, as a NoSQL database. And in Amazon, we have DynamoDB. Uh, for relational workloads, for, um, for relational workloads, we have Azure SQL database. So this is their platform as a service fully managed. If you want to have your SQL data, you have a SQL database, you want to migrate, you can mi migrate it on uh, Azure SQL database. So this is uh, their completely managed service. Then they also have customized service for Azure DB, for Postgres, as well as for, I think, MySQL. So comparing it with AWS and Google, on AWS, we have RDS, AWS RDS, which is a relational database service. And on Google side, we have Google uh, Cloud uh, Spanner, which is, um, you know, which is again a relational service. But then you have also have Cloud SQL, Google Cloud SQL, which you could use. So now coming to the networking category, we have Azure CDN, which is Azure Content Delivery Network. For AWS, we have CloudFront and for Google also we have uh, Google CDN content delivery network and uh, this is basically to provide services at the geographical locations across the globe and that's why for faster performance we you know we deliver the content right at the edge right where the customer sits and that's what content delivery network does the second is your azure vnet very important the base because this is your virtual network you segregate and create groups of resources within your uh, private network on cloud for amazon we have amazon vpc for google also we have vpc which is called as virtual private cloud same concept we call it here as vnet azure express route helps you connect the bridge connect the link between your cloud and your on-prem uh, infrastructure so for aws we have aws direct connect I guess and for uh, Google we have interconnect services Google Cloud interconnect so these are the basic networking services which you need to be aware of so now coming to the management side we have Azure Active Directory a very comprehensive service which provides uh, your identity and access management we have IAM in AWS we also have IAM services on GCP and similarly Azure Active Directory uh, provides these services uh, to Azure customers. Azure DevOps is a suite of services to provide all kind of DevOps tool under one umbrella, very famous service. Nowadays, people use directly go to Azure DevOps because you get everything under the same bucket. We don't have anything called as AWS DevOps or Google Cloud DevOps, but they also do have all the suits uh, available, suits of services av available. For example, for, uh, for AWS, we have code deploy, code build, all those kind of things are there, okay? So they also have those services. And then for Google, we have cloud build, cloud deploy. I might be wrong in the naming. Maybe if I am incorrect somewhere, I'll put it um, on the screen, okay? But yes, Azure DevOps is a very important service. So coming to Azure Monitor, as the name suggests, monitoring all the different resources across cloud, your Azure cloud, you use Azure Monitor. For AWS, we have AWS CloudWatch and for uh, Google, we have cloud monitoring. So these are the uh, these are the management services. So coming on the analytics side, we have Azure Synapse Analytics, which is basically providing all kind of data warehousing solution or, uh, you know, data warehousing or analytics services on Azure. If you talk about Amazon, we have Redshift for that. And in on Google, we have Google BigQuery. So this is uh, Synapse Analytics for your uh, data warehousing workloads. Azure Data Factory is nothing but your ETL tool. For AWS, we have AWS Glue. For Google Cloud, we have Google Cloud Data Fusion. Data Factory is a very user-friendly tool to create your ETL pipelines, to create your data pipelines by uh, a very good user-friendly UI. Coming to the booming part of the industry nowadays, which is machine learning, we have Azure ML. 
and Azure ML provides all kind of machine learning services for collecting, training the data and uh, you know creating, uh, uh, training your machine learning models. Everything is done with a very user friendly, friendly manner. You don't need to be a data scientist for that. You don't need to deploy your own models. You can use Azure ML. For that matter on AWS, we have SageMaker for, for doing exactly the same thing. And on Google, we have Vertex AI. So these services provide the machine learning uh, capabilities. Azure Cognitive Services is all about its image recognition, machine learning, related to machine learning, but specific to image recognition, text to speech, vision API. So we have certain services like in Amazon also, we have certain services under Amazon AI. And then under Google Cloud also, we have these services, AI services with different names. So Azure Cognitive Services is a suit or umbrella of services which gives you speech, learning, decision-making capabilities using AI and machine learning. So coming to the security part, under security, we have Azure Security Center, a common place for your security management for monitoring all kinds of threats which could, uh, you know, which could hamper your Azure services. For the same purpose on AWS, we have uh, Security Command Center and uh, AWS Security Hub. And on Google Cloud, we have Cloud Security Command Center, something like that. Name might vary a bit, but we do have these similar services with similar kind of names on AWS and on Google Cloud. Coming to the last and the 23rd service under Azure, we have Azure Sentinel, which is a cloud native service for providing SIEM, S-I-E-M, Security Information and Event Management Service and SOAR, S-O-A-R, which is Security Orchestration, Automation and Response. These are the things and services which are provided natively using Azure. If you talk about AWS, we have Guard Duty and AWS Security Hub and on Google, we do it using Security Command Center. So yes, these are the 23 services which we talked about. Again, there are more than 150 or 200 plus services on Azure. But these are some basic services which you need to know uh, in order to start your journey on Azure. So let me know which particular service you are currently using or you intend to use based on your particular career path. Let me know in the comments. So friends, we have finally come to the end of this video. I hope you now know a bit more about Azure Cloud and these 23 key services on Azure. Let me know in the comment which particular service you will be working on in your next project or in your current assignment, which particular career path you are targeting on Azure, what kind of videos you want me to make on Azure. I'm learning Azure nowadays. Let me know what you would want to learn on Azure. So until next time, guys, keep learning, keep sharing all your knowledge, and yes, keep hustling. Bye for now.